The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 8th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you got a question you can't call in, go ahead and send me an email. Send that early. Send it off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix uh, just uh, uh, the S&P added to it. Just went slightly green, up by 75 cents. The Dow's off 40. Nasdaq's down 24. Russell's off 3. Semis are down 2. Tranny's off 32. New York Stock Exchange is up 45. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, you have First Citizens Bank shares up 71 bucks, 7%. Zscaler, 17 bucks, 20%. Alpha Metallurgical Resource up 12 bucks, 8%. Netflix, eight bucks, about 8 bucks, 2%. Uh, and Nextera Energy up 7 bucks and change. That's about a 13.5% move. To the downside, it is micro strategy. Bad strategy today down 26 bucks nearly eight percent shockwave medical 15 bucks a little over five percent regenerate pharmaceuticals 13 dollars one percent catalent inc down 13 bucks 27 percent insulin corporation down 11 bucks or three percent so we got some movers and we've got some shakers but what's going on inside the general markets well i would say resistance 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 here we start with the weekly time frame chart first thing you'll see that the nq uh, traded up into the top of its weekly profile. 13,348 is a real key number to watch. The ES Mini is forming a brand new profile. This profile is with inside the prior profile. Tells us about a consolidation that's going on. Now, that's the ES Mini giving us two consolidation messages. We'll go back and look at the daily chart here momentarily. But the daily is giving us the same signal as the weekly chart is at the moment. Russell is uh, just uh, finding support at a rising trend line, but still trading below the weekly profile out there. It's nothing great to write home about. And just a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside the current profile for the Dow Equity Future contract. On the daily time frame, here you'll see the consolidation on the daily. You'll see the new weekly profile that is forming. You see the new daily profile that is forming out here. Now, what I would expect is that we will see price make its way up to the top of that consolidation. So now we'll expand that to the 4206.25 level. That's the top of the new daily profile that is for the es mini in the case of the nq it's it's up at re now look the es mini you don't see it here if i flip over to my other charts what i want you to know is that the es mini is up at resistance it's the oscillator and change line the oscillator and change line as we speak right now is printing out at 41.54 we're at 41.52 and a quarter. So we're up at resistance there. We're up at resistance on the NQ. We're up at resistance inside the Dow Equity Future contract. It's attempting to get back inside its daily profile. Closed below for more than two days. Old support can become resistance. In this case, that's what it's doing. 33.819. Now, price can close above that, get back inside the profile. 
33,975 would be the next move. And in the case of the Russell 2000, it's also up a resistance, descending trend line and the bottom of a profile out there. So it's very easy to take a look at the markets and communicate to you exactly what's going on. Everything right now is sitting at resistance. The question is, will it break through those resistance levels? And that piece of it, I don't know. But if we take a look at market breadth, just as maybe one first indication of that possibility, let's take a look at the 30 minute time frame. And a 30 minute time frame for the S&P 500, as we speak right now, 206 instruments trading above profile, 104 below. That is a bullish signal for that time frame. Let's take a look at the NQ, the NASDAQ 100, 44 above, 20 below. So we have for the short term time frames, the 30 minute time frames, this helps the intraday traders for sure. You have bullish signals or you at least have bullish market breadth. Well, how are we doing for the other time frame, Steve? Oh, excellent question. And if we take a look at the S&P 500, well, let me actually just uh, just to refresh the screen. I'm going to start with the NASDAQ. NASDAQ bullish all four time frames. So we're up at resistance on the daily time frame. We are market breadth positive on the 30, 60 to 40 daily and weekly. Now, in the weekly time frame, it's just by a smidgen. What I mean by a smidgen is 25 above and 23 below. To me, that's a smidgen out there, but it is still positive. It is still bullish out there. Whereas we take a look at the S&P 500. Remember, we talked about the S&P 500. We have two brand new signals today, each of them telling us about a consolidating market. When we take a look at the S&P 500, we're negative on the 60, we're negative on the daily, we're negative on the weekly, and we're positive on the 240. Sounds to me like choppy conditions ahead. Don't expect the market to necessarily break out to the upside or break down to the downside. Just a good old-fashioned consolidation, which really isn't a lot of fun to trade out there. But when you are in consolidations, basically the principle is you sell at the top, you buy at the bottom out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity future contracts. We go take a look. Let's just switch panels out here. Uh, well, we've got a couple of minutes. We can go take a look at the intraday charts, see if there's any kind of signals out here. Now, these are the daily charts. Let's let's move these over to the um, the intraday charts out here. So on an intraday basis, I would say the five hour and the four hour, really the four hour for the NQ is the one to keep an eye on. It looks to me like this is the one telling us the picture. Now, what do you mean by that, Steve? What, what picture is it telling us? Excellent question. Well, first picture that it's telling us is where is resistance. It is clear as a bell. Not that bells are very clear, but if you look at 13.353, that is a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And what did price do? On a four-hour time frame chart, well, it got right up to that resistance area at 5 o'clock in the evening, and that was done on May the 5th out there. Today is May the 8th. Well, couldn't bust it to the upside, as Tom likes to say. It tries to bust it to the downside. Where's the support to the downside? Clearly, that green oscillator and change line. What's a green oscillator and change line mean? It means the price oscillator is above zero for a 240-minute time frame. Those are bullish conditions, period. End of story. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't battles, because there are on a 240-minute time frame chart. 13,330.73 basically is where the top of its current profile is at. But we also know 13,353, there is resistance. So... Support is held, can't bust them down. Now price is going to try to bust them to the upside. It's got market breadth conditions that are bullish to suggest that that 240-minute chart will get up to that 13,330 uh, 13, level out there. Um, what else do we see? I see a wave number seven bottom on a 15-minute chart out there. That has confirmed price of other profiles suggests it wants to move higher. 30-minute chart is dealing with resistance levels, those resistance levels being the top of its profile, and its oscillator and change line. That's 13.30375 and 13.311 and change. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back from this break. We'll take a look at a couple of requests that came in last week. Riot, PACW, Tesla. Then we'll go take a look at Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. Dan wants to look at AGEN and the 30-year treasury. Reach out to us, folks. Steve at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. The request line is open, 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. Let's get to some of the requests that have come in. Uh, these first three are going to be from Friday. Uh, I did not get them until after the show was over, and I did not write down the names. My apology for who sent them the request, but thanks for doing so. The first one is Riot. So we take a look at Riot. This is Riot Platforms, R-I-O-T, is a ticker symbol. It's trading below the bottom of its daily profile and into a swing point with volume. So, so far... It's 1118, and we've seen 12.6 million shares traded. Now, the swing point it's trading into has volume of 27 million shares. It's pushing into that swing point. Now, it needs to close. If it closes below the bottom of that swing point, then you've got trouble. What you, what you have is an A to B equal CD to the downside. You don't have that just yet. But if you did get a close below 1006, that would be trouble. Now, just so happens that at the price point of uh, 1020, you have potential support. And that is the top of the monthly profile. So go over to the very right-hand panel. And so that says that the next area to the downside that you're looking at, or areas I really, what I should say, is 10, uh, what a 1020, and then uh, 1006. You close below both of those and so the 1006. Well, you do have a potential support area at 979, but with volume today being pushed like it is, more likely this would turn into an A to B equals CD to the downside, get you towards 750, but that 593 level would be open. On a weekly basis, you've got nine support at nine bucks. Well, first you got it at 980, then $9. In the case of the uh, monthly, we've really already covered that. So that's what I see when we take a look at Riot. I would expect Riot to pull back for at least another day or so. Why? Well, it had a two-day up move, kind of typical. And then you typically get a two-bar move to the downside. But watch the volume because the volume is pushing. So maybe this is going to be something more than that. But you still have to watch those swing points. So that's what I see when I take a look at Riot. Thank you for waking, wake, waking or waiting an entire weekend. For that review, let's take a look at the next instrument, PACW. PACW right now trading at about uh, 7 or 625. So this is uh, PacWest Bank Corp. 
It does have a TD nine count bottom. It did confirm that. And you can see that where price ran into resistance this morning as it gapped up was the top of that daily profile. So we know where the sellers were residing. The sellers have proven themselves out there. And so you're watching 728. Now, it's a bullish structured profile, and price is trading above its oscillator and change line. It is red. If price closes below it, and it being $6 in a penny, we'll call it 6 bucks. If price closes below it, we likely go experience a 344 to 440 level out there. No bottom pattern on a weekly. No bottom. Well, I have a wave number seven, potential wave number seven move. I don't know how reliable that one is going to be on the uh, monthly. Uh, but you do have that daily bottom and a consolidation, nothing on the uh, weekly chart that looks very en enticing uh, to us. So maybe it's got a consolidating market for the time being with inside that daily profile. And the last instrument from Friday was a take a look at Tesla. TSLA is a ticker symbol. Tesla this morning is trading above on Friday, closed above the top of its daily profile. That suggests we have a change in trend, change in trend to where? Well, the next move, 176.56. 176.56 is the uh, bottom of of its daily profile. Now, what it looks like to me is we may have a weekly Gartley buy pattern inside of Tesla. Let's uh, let's run the A to B line out here, and then we'll just simply move this over to the C point. Well, we're going to try to without messing the entire chart up. All right, let's try it one more time, Steve. Let's see if you can do it. Can't, there we go. So yes, most certainly. So you've got a one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD was confirmed last week with that bullish engulfing, apparently two weeks ago with the bullish hammer candle. So I, I, can, I can share with you that shareholders are absolutely on a Tesla saying we're making a bottom. However, it's got resistance, 176.56, and then a the battle above that would be 186.83. And that looks to me like where Tesla wants to uh, head to. Now, this is going to be day number four, or it appears it may be day number four of consecutive moves higher. It depends upon the close. So if we get that, what we should expect and anticipate is probably a two-day pullback, probably a two-day pullback inside of Tesla. So that's what it looks like we've got coming for us over the next couple of days. Potentially, it could start today. Uh, but um, I don't have any signals to suggest that that's what's really going to happen today. So that's what we have. We take a look at Tesla. I hope that that helped whomever requested it out. And thanks again for the request. Now, Nancy, she wants to take a look at Apple. And she's asked that question. Hey, where is it heading from here over the next couple of days? Well, Nancy, here's the issue that we really have with Apple. Uh, last week on Friday, it completed a TD. Well, it didn't complete it. It completed bar eight of a TD nine count. 90% of the time, when you get a successful bar number eight completion, in this case here, it's the high of the pattern thus far, you get a completed, confirm, you get a, a confirmed TD9 count. Now, we also know that the high can take place this week or next week out there. So that sends us off to the daily chart for us to interpret what shareholders want to do right now at 11.23 in the morning. They're telling us price wants to move higher. It does have a triggered Rosemont indicator signal, but it also negated on Friday a confirmed Rosemont indicator signal and price closed above its uh, bearish engulfing uh, candle out there. So... Uh, no top on the daily, a a uh, a warning message on the weekly and the monthly is trading above the top of its profound green oscillator and change line. So conditions are bullish, bullish, and bullish for those three time frames. Therefore, where is price likely to head to? Nancy, you know the answer to this question. It's going to be the top of the swing point that remains out there as we take a look at the weekly time frame, which was also a wave number seven pattern. It was also a TD9 count, and it was a Rhodes momentum indicator. But nonetheless, that is where price is very likely headed to. And where is that? 182.94. In other words, conditions are present at the moment for that to unfold. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart here for Apple, what do we see? We see a Roach Mintum indicator top. It pulled price back below its profile. It's back inside there right now. So it doesn't look like and that would look like it was a false breakdown because there's only one bar below the bottom of that 30-minute profile out there. So, Nancy, I'd have to say price wants to move higher, needs to do it with the markets. We know the NQ is up at resistance. We know the NQ is up at resistance out here. So I just I, I Apple wants to move higher, but you got to expect it to be a very choppy move, or I would expect it to be a very choppy move. So I do hope that that helps you out. Uh, the next question is from Dan and the Tigers. Dan, he wants to take a look A-G-E-N. So let's get over to these charts here. I've got a populated AGEN. We'll get this thing pulling up here. And on my other screen, I'll figure out what AGEN is doing and make sure that we've got the right price point, which right now looks like it's trading at about a buck fifty-eight. 
And the question is, is now the time to add? So in this case here, Dan has a uh, investment or a trade in this at least. It's got a nice road momentum indicator bottom for back on April the 13th. Price runs run up into a resistance level of the top of a profile at 180. It's trading below. It traded below that. You're now back inside there. So what you want to really see price do today, Dan, to, so price is sitting at support. Um, did we test the swing point? We did not test the swing point. Don't need to, but price set support. And what you do want it doing today is closing above a buck fifty-eight, and you're trading at a buck fifty-eight. You know, my white background screen says a buck sixty. My black background says a buck fifty-eight. It's a buck fifty-eight. Consolidation and TD nine count bottom on the uh, weekly time frame chart has simply led to a consolidation. Um, and it's trading above its, green, uh, its red oscillator and change line. You've got a monthly TD nine count bottom, hammer candle. Uh, well, doji candle from last week. Uh, safe to add. What are we doing on the 30-minute time frame chart? Well, here, here's what I would say, Dan. You're already in at uh, 154. So, yeah, you want. And if you were just a starter position, so to speak, then yeah, now would be the time to add. You just want to see it keep that uh, bottom of that profile at that buck 58 level. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow trade down 100, S&P's off 5, NASDAQ 34, Russell's off uh, 9 points. We're take a look at the uh, charts here. I think we are, yeah, for the 30-year Treasury. And the question that has been posed to me is, uh, where do you add uh, if you are in a long position? And the answer to that question, I would have to say, would be the bottom of its uh, profile. And so the area would I be looking at, Dan, would be between, let me give you the range. The range here would be between 129.02 and 129.17. I'm going to move actually over from the white background charts to the black ones for a moment. So let me, this will be, provide you with a little bit more clarity. Now we get uh, different profile levels occasionally, even though I'm using the same data. Um, but the ones that are more consistent are the ones that are being produced by eSignal. So I'm going to expand out this chart here, Dan, and you can see that what it's actually doing right now is it's pulled back into a bullish structured profile. So it's really within inside that support zone between 129.17 and 129.31. But there's also this consolidation pattern that I see out there, and that's where I gave the low from the uh, trading day of May the 1st out there. So on that basis, with regard to the daily time frame, that's what it's doing. Now we're going to change back to the other set of charts so we can take a look at some of the intraday signals. Is it, are the intraday charts supporting that idea that now might be that time to add as price gets back into a bullish structured level. Well, if we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart, the answer would be yes. Why? Because it confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom with prices consolidating right now with inside its profile. The 60 minute chart, Dan, formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and now a TD nine count bottom has been uh, confirmed. It's going to complete at uh, 12 noon. No bottom signal on the 20, 120, nor on the uh, 240, and uh, price at support on the uh, five-hour time frame chart. So at least intraday, you've got some potential for a rally. No resistance levels have been taken out. So again, to summarize on that 30-year Treasury, price is back into an area of uh, support out there. I know what your time frame is, new position, not add on the 30-year. Oh, new position, Steve. Not, okay. So, um you know, here, here, here's the daily chart, or, you know, uh, the, the intraday charts out there. Uh, is there a time frame, Dan, that you would pri primarily rely upon uh, for any kind of signal change? I don't know what uh, type, type of position you're, you're looking to add here. Because that would add some, some real color to it, at least, see if there's some kind of patterns present on that time frame. So I'll leave things as is right now, midterm to, mid to daily. Um, then what I would need to see to add now, I need to see those uh, 30 and 60 minute oscillator and change line levels fail. And then that would be your confirmation that um, that you should have added right now. You, you know what I mean. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, question. And um, let's go on to the next one. The next one is PAA. And uh, PAA, let's get uh, to that chart. Give me a moment. Actually, let me close this down, free up a little bit of resource. And now we get to PAA, which is plain, plain something. Uh, let's see, there's a PAA is, is Plains All-American. And uh, the question is, will it move higher out there? Well, let me share with you what will stop it from moving higher, which right now is the top of its daily profile. And that level is at 1290. I think this might have been a question from Roger inside the Tiger's Den. Yeah, I think it was from Roger. Do you see any signals of this stock moving up in 30 days? Right now, the uh, – oh, I take that's not the top of the profile. The top of the profile is 1313. So what do we have here? What do we have here? What did we get at the top? All we got at its high, and the high that I'm referring to was from April 24th, was a stock that ran higher into TD9 count breakdown resistance, Raj. That's at 1329. And then price pulls back, gets below its profiles, but you do have a new profile that formed on Friday. So your level of support here that you're watching is 1226. The actual low today is 1266. So I'm sorry, 1260, 1266 is the bottom of the profile. So what price did today so far is it pulled back and it tested and it held support. If price gets below that level, then what I would say is it really opens up the door for 1188. I know you were asking, will this thing move higher? The only it's going to have to clear 30. It, let's say that let's say the answer to that were yes, because it held support. What you do know is 1329 and 1313 are going to be key resistance levels for you. On a weekly time frame, the pullback last week was nothing more than a test of support, the bottom of that weekly profile at 1216. So that's a short-term 
bullish thing. What did it do from a volume standpoint? It was testing a swing point from the week of March 24th. That did volume at 22.7 million. Last week, that test was done with 21.8. So you really do have a test with lighter volume at a swing point. Can't bust them down. Price tries to bust them up. Well, in essence, that's what it did this morning. Raj, it uh, bounced up uh, to the, or very close to, the oscillator and change line of the weekly time frame of 12.99 out there. So that's another level for you to be watching is that weekly oscillator and change line. I haven't answered your question yet because we're really looking for the stock charts to answer the question. On a 30-minute time frame chart, what do we have? We have a TD9 count top and price below support. I would say that PAA wants to, on a short-term basis, that's the 30-minute time frame, wants to go target that 12.48 level. So your specific question is, do I see it moving higher? I don't see it taking out 13.29, and I don't see it uh, maybe, yeah, I don't see it, I don't, I don't have any signal right now to suggest that it will take out that level. It could still trade higher, but watch 12.66. Lastly, though, I'll just take a quick peek, see if there's any kind of seasonal data out here for Plains American uh, Pipeline. PAA, again, is the ticker symbol. Let's see if anything comes up on our Seasonex chart, and we do have it. So let's see how much data we have, 24 years worth of data. And, and in, the case, in this case here, it's seasonal pattern during the last 24 years is that it moves higher into about the uh, early part of June, the first week of June out there. So you've got that going for you. But if that's really going to happen, price has got to be able to get back above that daily green oscillator and change line at 1283. So, Raj, I hope that that helped you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. And have a, a wonderful day. The next question coming in is from Duke. And Duke is asking a question. He wants to buy the ES Mini and natural gas. So how is Stevie going to, uh, how is he going to answer that? Well, I know one way is to, Duke, let me just, let me just restate what I had said earlier. Let me do it maybe by doing this here. You have the ES Mini at resistance. So I would never tell you to buy something at resistance because resistance may hold. In this case here, that resistance level is that green oscillator and change line. And that level is at 41.52. Because we do have a new profile, it is bullish in structure. That new profile gives you the potential to buy this at 40.76. Am I saying it's going to get back there? No, not at this second, I don't. But that would be the place where you, you would consider between 40.76 and 41.05, but not now at resistance. And we're at resistance on the NQ, we're at resistance on the Dow, we're at resistance on the Russell 2000. So now you have all four equity future contracts at resistance. Typically, if you can't bust through them, it's going to try to bust it back to the downside. So you, please, use that new daily profile, new bullish structure daily profile for the ES mini. And the answer to your question might be somewhere between 4076 and 4105, but you want to look at what's going on in the intraday charts before you make that decision. We come back from this break. Let's explore the natural gas option that Duke wants to take a long position in. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So I switched over to the uh, black background charts here for natural gas because it's picking up the uh, new daily profile that is attempting to form out here. And it's a bullish one. It's bullish in structure. Uh, now, price right now is trading above the center of that profile. And that's at 218, Duke. And a close above that is going to suggest to run to 242. But the question is, is this just a normal move in a market that's been moving lower, which this has most certainly been moving lower? And I don't think we know the answer to that question just yet. So I'm going to switch over to the white background charts, and we're going to try to answer that. Or what does natural gas need to do today specifically uh, that we would like to see, or I would like to see? Um, so as we take a look at it, here are the monthly, weekly, daily, and then some of the intraday charts for natural gas. Now, on a daily time frame, I'm going to expand this out. We can see that you have both a roads momentum indicator signal and you have a TD9 count bottom pattern. Now, that TD9 count, that the, the roads momentum indicator signal needs a bullish reversal candle. The TD9 count pattern does not. What the TD9 count pattern needs, though, today is price must close. It's got to back up a bit. Price must close below 2.214, and we're at 2.236. So if it closes above 2.214, this TD9 count pattern that you see here today, that will go away when we look at it tomorrow because it will have violated the rules. And then what I would say is price is just likely to run up to 242. I would prefer that uh, at this stage here, I prefer that you wait. I took a long position this morning inside of natural gas. My hope was at that stage that we would not get a close above the close of bar number five out there. So we'll just simply have to assess this one step at a time. And again, that level is 2.21. For. Now, the reason to consider, well, yeah, I mean, we talked about this now, I think, for the last couple of months out here. But you, but the nice thing about last week was that move lower triggered bar number nine of a TD9 count. So this pattern is going to complete this week. But what the struggle with natural gas is happens to be that red oscillator and change line. Well, the oscillator and change line, red or green, it's been a problem. It's been a problem for natural gas since September 2nd on a weekly basis. So it's quite a while out there. But we do have, we got a road spent indicator signal. That needs a bullish reversal candle. But you do have a complete, a confirmed TD9 count bottom pattern that will complete at the end of this week out there. So we got signals. Um, what else can I assist you with? So on the intraday charts, what do we know now? The 30-minute chart, potentially, it's only 11.44, but potentially, if it uh, does produce a bearish engulfing candle, I uh, would have a short-term top, but it's really neutral. 
price has to get really below 2.21 for it to have any meaning to the downside. No top on the 60, nothing on the 120. Bar number eight on the 240. That means you still need another uh, eight hours, eight hours and 15 minutes before we know anything about that uh, chart out here and run into resistance on the five hour time frame of the TD9 count breakdown area. So I, I don't have a great. Uh, set of signals out here to suggest that we're going to get that close a duke that we'd really like to see on the daily time frame um but if you're asking me which of the two would you take a long position in i, I natural gas but if i'm you i'm just gonna wait i think i'll wait another day maybe another two days out there um max so i do hope that helps you out thanks so much for taking the time to uh, write in now i do not believe oh there we go thank you doji i was gonna say i don't believe i had a another request out there but doji inside the tiger's den was kind enough to take care of that and doji wants to take a look at the doji uh paypal pwpl so let's get over to uh the charts that i have that can do that p oops that was not the set let's try this one pwpl there we go. So PWPL, PayPal, what is it doing? If you give me a moment, sorry for the dead air. That's the wrong panel. This is the right panel. P W P. No, it's P Y P L, isn't it? Yeah, P Y. Geez, Stevie. P Y P L. No wonder we didn't get any data out there. So now let's take a look at the PayPal, which is trading out at 75.92. And it is trading about a bunch of these charts here, popular. You'll see that. These charts show 75, 65, it's trading above that. It's also trading above the top of a new profile, 75.41. So who asks about PayPal? Doji. So Doji, can you please look at PayPal? Consolidated in a channel since April 20th. Oscillators are trending up on the daily and earnings after the close. Thank you. So let's take a look at PayPal on a daily time frame. See what we see out here. We see a nice little rising trend line that has held. We see a sideways consolidation, just as you've pointed out. We have a new profile that formed today. Looks to me like PayPal will go up towards the top of the consolidation. Is it the high of the shooting star candle out here from March the 9th up at the uh, 79.27 level? Is it the high of the uh, of basically the bearish engulfing uh, set of candles up at the uh, 77.95 level? Or is it the top of the new profile? The top of the new profile... Oh, mm, this is a daily profile. That's really interesting. So I've got a top of a new pro Oh, no. It's trading above the top of the new profile, 75.41. So it did show up here. So I don't see it busting it to the downside um, with regard to the earnings report. Don't know that it will bust it to the upside. I think you have this really nailed out here, Doji. It's been in that uh, consolidating market, likely to, to, to do that. It is trading above resistance. But, you know, don't know. No, And if it did bust above this consolidation, the next resistance level up to the top would be 82.85. Now, that's courtesy of the daily time frame. But let's peek in on the uh, weekly or the monthly. Boy, the weekly shows you the, shows you the consolidation big time. And it's been going on for quite a while. I mean quite a while out here. You'd have to say it's been going on since February of 27, Feb, no, February of 2020. Oh, just, yeah, February. So for the last several months out here. Um, you've got a confirmed bottom, Roach Mint Indicator bottom. On the monthly time frame chart, but prices trade below profiles. It's kind of an ugly chart out there. Kind of an ugly chart out here when we take a look at uh, PayPal. But uh, with regard to earnings, I suspect if it bounces higher, it bounces up into uh, resistance, those levels we looked at. If it bounces lower, back into support at about $71.58. So I hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for that request out there. Another request coming in from Roger, I believe. Yeah. Oh, no, Dan, let's see. Four years from when I read on a negative. Nope, that's not a request. That was McGuppy. And Roger would like to take a look at ConocoPhillips. COP is a ticker symbol. So let's fire that up. And ConocoPhillips is trading at, at the moment, last trade fired off at 102.10. 102.10. And uh, what this is doing here, Roger, it is uh, trading with inside its consolidation. or It's trading into the top of the daily profile. Give me a moment to let me see if I open this up, if we can easily pick it out. It's kind of hard to pick it out. I'll back it up just a tad, but you can see it's a bearish structured. No, it is. It is. Yeah, it's a bearish structured profile out here. So the top is at 102.12. We're trading right now at 102.10. The center is at 101.32. 
The bottom is at 9650. So the cool thing here, if it can't bust through resistance, the level that you'll be watching, Roger, is going to be that 10132. If you got a close below 10132, that's telling you that we head back down to the bottom of the profile, and that's at that 9650 level. That's what I see when I take a look at profiles. What else do we have out here to assist us with regard to conical films? What else do we see on the daily time frame? I don't see much there to add to our reading. We did have a test rejection of a swing point. That was done with 10 million shares with a swing. It was done with 6.8. So you do have rejection at swing point on the daily time frame. I think you got a consolidation with inside his profile levels, Roger. We come back, we'll finish looking at the weekly and the monthly, see if there's anything else out there. And then and we'll finish out the show. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we finished off the charts here for ConocoPhillips. What we can see, the only thing else that I was able to identify is uh, the mere fact that uh, you are in bar number three of consecutive moves higher. Last time, last two times we've seen that, we've seen at least a two-day pullback. So we know that we're up at resistance inside of ConocoPhillips on the uh, daily time frame. And this looks to me like uh, to expect a uh, pullback for at least one or two days out there. So I do hope that that helps. Um, uh, from a seasonal perspective, if we pull this over here, Mr. Bill's asking about that. Let's see what COP looks like. Let's see if we've got the data. Uh, here we go for ConocoPhillips. How much do we have? We have 41 years worth of data. And so ConocoPhillips shows that we're at a top basically right now. 
a pullback for a few days, May 13th, and a move higher into the early part of uh, June. So that's what the ConocoPhillips uh, looks like out there for you. So I do hope that that helps you out, Mr. Bill. Let's get to our last request. This last request coming in from um, Ron. Ron wants to take a look at OHI, which is Omega Health Investors. And his question is, if you're looking for a potential entry, and, his, and also he says, long term, I'm correct, this is a consolidation. Yes. Look at the very right-hand panel, Ron. That's the monthly time frame chart. And so it is trading with inside a consolidation, suggesting that it wants to move higher to the top of that consolidation. Well, if it's going to do that, price must take out 29.26, a level where it found resistance last week, which is the top of its weekly bearish structured profile. If it can do that, then what price ought to do is get up to 32.57. Now, on a daily time frame, uh, so what you like is we're up at resistance. Will it hold? I don't know. But you wanted an entry price. So your entry price, if resistance can hold, would be the daily green oscillator and change line. It is currently printed at 2771. If price pulls back, that number is going to fall lower. But I'll say between 2707 and 2771 would be the area to take a long position. So yes, a long-term consolidation. You already hit the top of a resistance level on the weekly. That says stay put. Uh, if you get a pullback, your entry area could be between 2707 and 2771. So we got to everything, which is always a beautiful thing. Folks, stay tuned for all the great program we've got lined up for you. Sorry about these choppy, consolidating markets. But based upon those new signals inside the ES Mini, I think we got to get used to it for a period of time. Have a terrific day, folks. Marvelous Monday. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday.